Hello Libra and welcome to this little corner of the internet that is Wild Fox Alchemy. If we haven't met before my name is Maria Guyon and I am an intuitive business success coach and a tarot card reader amongst other things and I'm here to do your monthly reading for what is left from the month of November 2021. I have to make massive apologies to anybody who's been waiting for this video it's very late I almost didn't get a chance to do it at all, <laughs> but I've managed to squeeze some time in and I cannot tell you how happy I am to be able to be doing some readings today. My life has been a little bit chaotic lately and um, I've really missed doing this. I've really missed doing this. So let's get on with it. Enough about me and my nonsense. Let's find out what's happening to you for the rest of this month. We start with Nightingale Spirit. Love is all around. So let's have a look and see what Colette Baron Reed has to say about this because honestly I'm being directed to go to the book. In the darkness of night, Nightingale Spirit sings her song of love and hope, a harbinger of dawn, to remind you that the sun will rise again soon. You are so loved and the illumination song of the Nightingale Spirit calls to you a new level of self-awareness and connection with the light. Yes, there is shadow and darkness, but love and prosperity exist everywhere, even in the seeming emptiness of space, darkness and a starless night. Hearken to the message, letting the music of the Nightingale's song remind you that love is all around. Feel it and trust in tomorrow's light, renewing your ability to recognise that the spaces that appear empty are filled with love and abundance. Illumination will happen soon. Now, even though this card has not come out in the reverse, in the protection position, I'm drawn to read you the protection message here. It says, the darker the skies, the more it seems the dawn will never appear. But Nightingale Spirit is here to remind you that the sun will shine again. You will soon feel the love and notice the abundance that surrounds you. Sing now, put on some music or simply sing into the empty space. For finding the light within and giving it voice will give rise to hope and help you begin to hear the call of another who, like you, was beginning to fear the light would never come. Bring the light into the darkness with love from within. Give it voice and know that daybreak will be here soon. Are you struggling a bit there, Libra? I get a kind of heavy energy around that card. It's a little bit of... It reminds me of the Nine of Swords energy where it's very much about the dark before the dawn, about laying in bed at four o'clock in the morning, you know, the darkest time when everything just seems so huge and so massive and so pointless and you feel like there's no way out of anything. And this is your financial spread. So that indicates to me that you've been having these feelings about money. If you are having those feelings about money, Libra, I want you to know that you are definitely not alone. This pandemic situation has been horrendous for a lot of people. I know a lot of people that have suffered business-wise because of Brexit. There are a lot of UK businesses that have managed to weather the storm. You know, they've had enough money to, to cough up all the extra stuff that they're being asked to pay now. But a lot of small businesses haven't. Little tiny creators with Etsy shops are suddenly finding themselves unable to post out to Europe or even the other way around, actually, European producers who were shipping to the UK are now finding that the costs are just prohibitive. So they're having to really think now about where to find new markets for their things or put their prices up. And then, of course, you put your prices up and you find a million other people that cost less. And it's just going round and round in circles for people. So you're not alone. I don't think there's many people that I know at the moment that are 100% flourishing there's a lot going on and so if you are feeling a bit dark about money don't feel like you're alone in this because isolation is the worst thing depression loves isolation anxiety loves isolation you're not isolated and the other thing that that card is reminding you of is the fact that there is money out there we're often raised i think in our society to feel like money is finite and that if elon musk and jeff bezos have all those billions then that means that the rest of us don't have anything and that's not strictly true there's always enough abundance around so spirit is there to remind you to count your blessings and think about what you've got but just to remember that there is abundance all around and just to keep looking for it don't close yourself off don't convince yourself that there's no hope because there always is hope this is just the dark before the dawn okay 
So, where you need to focus your energy, transformation. This is the death card in other decks, transition and liberation. I feel like if you've got money problems, then it's time to make some changes. Okay? The death card is about ending things and letting go. Change is inevitable. But what I feel compelled to tell you is that there are two kinds of change. There's the change that we make and we control. And then there's the change that is imposed upon us. And change that is imposed upon us is often the worst kind of change because we feel out of control. We feel like life is happening to us. Things are happening to us that we cannot deal with. And we feel like we don't have any choice. We feel like we don't have any options. We feel very trapped. This card is talking about you taking the choice now to make transformation. You need to focus your energy on the changes that you need to make. Now, it could be something as simple as putting your business online if you've had a, a bricks and mortar business for a long time and the pandemic has created an issue with customer footfall maybe it's time to get yourself online maybe it's a, a time to make a mix of the two you know have an online store and an offline store maybe you've suffered i know a lot of plush artists and crafts people have suffered because there haven't been any conventions for the last couple of years and usually they spend all year making things and then travel around the convention selling stuff. And as soon as these conventions were cancelled, there's no outlet for things. So maybe you need to be looking for some other outlets. There's something that needs to be done here. And you need to control the change, Libra. OK, don't sit back with your head in the sand and wait. And I'm being drawn to, to say this is a cicada and... They often lay in the ground dormant for years before they actually hatch and come out. Don't be that cicada hiding in the ground, hoping that everything will blow over, because eventually you will have to come out and face what's happened. And I feel, I do feel drawn to tell you that you have to take control of this transformation. You need to plan it and implement it yourself, because the trouble is when we leave things that's when life happens to us and choices are made for us okay you don't want to be clinging to something i don't know you want to be clinging to a you don't want to be clinging to a, a bricks and mortar store only to find you can't pay the rent and it's taken away from you anyway by the landlord don't put yourself in a position where things can happen to you make sure that you take charge of your transformation your strengths positives things that you've got going for for you are the seven of acorns this is a, a card that represents determination and stamina it can be a card that can represent a bit of challenge sometimes somebody you know maybe a critics come out of the woodwork and you have to have the the determination to keep moving forward and not let anybody get you down if something's, you know, this, this money situation is obviously a pain in the penny, to be quite frank. It's not something anybody enjoys. But you have to have the determination to keep moving forward. It's definitely a reminder that, you know, abundance is all around. That you can take charge of changing things. What's that about the definition of insanity being trying to, to get a different result from doing things the same way that you've always done them? You've got to change things up to get a different result. And this card is all about determination and stamina, really fighting, fighting hard. Even if you feel really challenged, you've got to fight. This is a card of moving forward. It's a seven. Sevens are always about moving forward and taking some action. And I feel like being determined, your determination and stamina will get you through this situation. Possible blocks, weaknesses, warnings. We've got the King of Acorns, optimism and innovation. I love this guy. He's my favourite card. If you know me by now, you'll have heard me say that every time he pops out. I love him. This is a card that represents optimism and innovation. Excuse my squeaky chair, by the way. He is a visionary. He's charismatic. He's a leader. He naturally brings people together with that charismatic way that he is. These court cards represent personality or person, and in this case, I believe it's you. You could be blocking feelings of optimism. 
you could be blocking your own feelings of innovation. You've been asked to make changes and it could be that you can't see how. That maybe you're feeling pessimistic and you need to be reminded that this abundance and love is all around you. That there's no reason to be pessimistic. I heard a saying today that said you can't make a living or it's hard to make a living, sorry, whilst you are worried about how you're going to make a living. And it's so true. I've been in that position, you know, if, if you've listened to my stuff or read my blog posts, you'll know, you know, in 2013, I was at rock bottom. I was living in emergency housing. I was relying on food banks to feed my family. I had just had a massive mental breakdown and lost my business, my home that went with the business. Everything, everything that I had loved and valued apart from my family and a few bits and pieces. It was horrendous. And whilst all that was going on, if somebody would have said to me, I need you to sit now and think about where you're going to go from here. You're going to be innovative and creative and come up with all these great new ideas. There was no way, because I was suffering from a severe depression. But the thing is, if it's just anxiety and worry about what's happening that is stopping you from being inventive, you just have to try and lay it aside. And I know that sounds easier said than done, but I've got a little tip for you. If you're sitting there worried about money to the point where you've got that sick feeling in your stomach, your head is just full of what ifs and how am I's and where's this going to come from? And, you know, every morning you're getting up and there's letters on the floor from a bank or credit cards or whatever. And you're just thinking, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a link below this video for you. And it is Paul McKenna's Havening Technique. And I want to tell you that this helped me no end. It takes away all the emotional stress from a situation. And I still use it to this day. If there's something that's bothering me, if I'm feeling a little bit sick or anxious about something, you can use this havening technique and it will flood your body with dopamine. And it will stop the bad, horrible feelings that then create this impasse where you can't be innovative and you can't create because you're so consumed with worry. Try it. It, it works for soldiers with PTSD that have seen horrible things that were waking up with nightmares and, you know, just that uh, horrible, sick feeling in their stomach all the time. And it's worked miracles for those soldiers. And it's worked miracles for me. At my lowest points, I've used this technique and it has helped me clear my head, clear the emotional gut problems, you know, the nausea, the, the stressful feelings. And it's helped me see clearly so that I can bounce up and be optimistic and see how I can make the changes that need to be made to move forward. It really works, I promise you. It's a little bit of kind of hypno magic, I guess I'd call it. It's fabulous. The outcome is the nine of feathers, perspective and self-empowerment. This is a card again. This is the Dark Before the Dawn card. Do you remember I said it's like the the Nine of Swords? This Dark Before the Dawn thing, this light at the end of the tunnel thing with the Nightingale spirit. That is what that card is. How strange that that's come out. Fascinating. It's the, the same message that you got at the beginning. The overall energy is what you're getting at the end. This is a time for perspective, for self-empowerment, for understanding that whatever you're going through at the moment is temporary. There's light at the end of the tunnel, but it's going to take a bit of work from you. You're going to have to work on this optimism and innovation and try not to dwell on the negative side of things. Really, really do try this havening technique. It'll take, it'll take you about 15 minutes. And, you know, I promise you, <laughs> if you're looking for woo-woo, you won't be disappointed. It's right up my street, you know, strange stuff moving your eyes and rubbing your arms and stuff, and it sounds crazy. But believe me, it is like magic. It works so well and it will help you to move forward into this nine of feathers energy of it just being the dark before the dawn. And you'll release the blocks that are stopping you 
reaching this optimistic phase and feeling innovative and like you can bring in a change that you're strong enough to get through this and do anything because you are let's move into your business reading and see what we've got we've got soul family calling your tribe you don't have to do it alone we've got dolphins and whales playing there we've got two ladies getting together I said at the beginning of this reading about feeling depressed, about feeling isolated and how depression and anxiety and stress over money absolutely love isolation. I feel like this is a message to you now to not isolate. There's an awful lot of guilt and shame surrounding money and money issues and lack of money. And it's not healthy because the more we isolate and the more we keep it quiet, the more it festers the more the shame builds, the guilt builds, the more we feel like we're keeping secrets. And that is a horrible, horrible feeling. It's time for you now to find some friends, to call in a tribe of people that will support you, that will understand you. And there are groups of people out there, you can find them on social media, that, you know, will understand and won't judge lots of people me for a start you know i've been there and you struggling with money or struggling with your business it doesn't make you a bad person it doesn't really say anything about you at all it doesn't say that you're a bad manager of money and therefore you know you should be ashamed of yourself it doesn't say anything like that most people who get into trouble with money or who don't make enough money it's not because they're evil and bad it's circumstances. You never know what is around the corner and people can lose everything at the drop of a hat. I didn't deliberately go out to lose my business and my home. Circumstances happened to me. My mental health suffered and as a result, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't function. I couldn't run my business anymore. Don't let yourself get into that position. I never told anybody about the extent of the issues I was having with my business. I felt very alone and ashamed and guilty and responsible. You know, I had a family to feed. Losing everything was horrendous. But, you know, we survived. I promise you, it is the dark before the dawn because, you know, <laughs> you think it's the worst thing imaginable. And then out of bad things, you know, quite often good things come. But I feel like this is a message to you to say you don't have to do this alone. Get some help. Even if it's not really support over your financial issues even if you know i'm not saying you have to go and tell everybody you, your business what i'm kind of saying is maybe there's somebody who can support you to make more money somebody who can help you with your confidence who can cheer you on who can encourage you to build this optimism and innovation who will bring out the best in you and make you feel inspired and motivated to pick yourself up and get on now if you're interested I've talked about this before. I started the Firefly Circle and I put it on Mighty Networks. And the Firefly Circle is for women who want to make a giant impact on the planet with their business. So it can be somebody that wants to be a sustainable business owner. It can be somebody who wants to change lives through either directly what they do with their business or with how they spend their profits. You know, maybe you support various charities or like I'm supporting Team C's this month or till the end of the year actually. Um, there's ways and means of, of bringing impact to, to turn the situation around on the planet. We're all aware of global warming. We're all aware of the extinction of the animals and all this sort of thing. And as a, a person who feels called to protect the planet, as a Gaian person, it's important to me. And it could be that you just want to come along to that. And we can motivate each other and inspire each other to keep pressing on, to not focus on all the downsides, but, you know, maybe to network and, and create some friendships with some new people who might be able to refer you for business, all those different things. If you're interested in joining, let me know and I will post something in the comments below. Where you need to focus your energy in general on your business is the five of shells, hope and readjustment. <laughs> The fives for me are all about choices. They're supposed to be about conflict and tension, about you being kind of halfway through a journey. But for me, 
in these readings I always feel like it's it's a pivotal point where you have the choice to either see all the bad stuff or look for the good stuff you have the choice to focus on whether the glass is half full or whether it's half empty and that's what I feel this is a message for this is telling you to focus your energy on the hope on the readjustment it's kind of about change this card it's about regret and loneliness and focusing on I don't know if you know the Rider weight one where he's got three cups that have emptied and fallen over and two that are full behind him and he's not looking at those similar with this we've got a firefly I'm talking to the firefly circle maybe this is a sign you should join um, he's got the dark shell in front of him that he's focusing on he's so busy focusing on that he can't see the four that he's lit up behind him these other four opportunities you need to focus on the positives now on the opportunities that are opening up to you not on the things that are going wrong not on the loss not on the regrets not on any of that you need to focus on the hope and the readjustment it's interesting that it's come underneath this transformation card readjustment and transition it's all change isn't it it's all about making changes strengths ten of acorns responsibility and dedication you can dedicate yourself to getting out of whatever situation that you're in but this card always comes with a warning even though it's in the strengths position you will get a long way with your determination stamina this card also stands for determination dedication to stuff but it comes with the proviso that you don't take on too much it's very easy to start becoming duty bound and burdened and then you just burn yourself out all right so if you're struggling a bit financially there Libra and you're thinking well I'll just work 18 hour days and I will just throw myself at everything and I will have you know no lunch hour I will have no self-care time I will not take any time to do anything other than just focus on making the money and getting myself out of whatever fix I might be in that is no good there's nothing wrong with being determined there's nothing wrong with having the stamina to push forward there's nothing wrong with taking responsibility for the situation that you're finding yourself in what there is a problem with is becoming overloaded the more that you do and the more that you overwork the more time you're going to need off later and the thing is you can't even say oh well I'll, I'll sleep and do self care and relax and everything when all this is over and I fix the situation because life has a horrible habit of making you take time out you know we're in winter time here if you're in the northern hemisphere cold season flu season you know how many times do we work and work and work and then suddenly we're bedridden with the flu we just can't move you don't want to make yourself ill remember it's time for optimism and innovation and in order to survive whatever this situation is you need to try and make sure you get good sleep eat well move your body go for a walk for half an hour every day and just let go meditate do this havening technique thing I'm telling you about because that will help to take a lot of the stress out of things and so you'll be able to concentrate on what is important spend time with your partner spend time with your family don't just burn yourself out trying to fix whatever's going on again this is about not doing it alone it could be that you can delegate some tasks to your soul family to the people that you know you need people that can support you maybe somebody who doesn't mind doing a bit of social media marketing for you or somebody that doesn't mind helping you with delivering things somebody that doesn't mind wandering around Facebook singing your praises <laughs> it's as simple as that or somebody that just doesn't mind coming around making dinner for your kids and making you a cup of tea every now and again you know just make sure that you're looking at your own self-care weaknesses obstacles warnings we've got the eight of acorns the eight of acorns is about moving forwards and letting go of things in the past it's about putting energy in to get results 
I feel again this message is for you to let go of the, the burden, the stress, the guilt, the shame, the pain. It's about putting the energy in to get the results. This is a card that's very much about if you don't take the action, nothing will happen. Does that make sense? You've got to follow the energy in these cards. You've got to take some action towards what you need to happen. You've got to make this transformation, this readjustment that will move you forward. Don't let this beat you down. Don't let it steal your energy so much that, you know, if you put no energy into something, what results are you going to get? None. If you put a lot of energy into something, then you get results. But don't <laughs> don't put all the energy in and burn yourself out. It feels like a bit of a mixed message, but that's just it is just a warning to you there. And the outcome is the three of shells, playfulness and bliss. That's an interesting outcome because it's about social groups and friends and celebrating good times, which says to me that it will all turn out all right in the end. But I feel it's it's really strange because we've got this nightingale spirit that is all about the dark before the dawn and remembering that abundance is available to you. It ends with the Nine of Feathers, which is all about the dark before the dawn. It starts the business reading with calling a tribe, you don't have to do anything alone, and ends with playfulness and bliss and celebrating good times. The key, I think, to your success here is not isolating yourself. You really do need to surround yourself with people that care and that can help you. And that, you know, that there's no shame in saying that you're struggling, Libra, at all. You'd be surprised how people will rally round if they feel like you're struggling and they want to help. You know, and I do feel like you're very capable of getting through this. But having some friends around will go a long way. I think there's a big danger of you overdoing it, trying to fix this situation yourself. You know, it could even be something as simple as having a friend with you if you go to renegotiate a lease or, you know, if, if you've got a debt coming in, somebody that can help you try and sort out a payment plan or something like that. You just need some assistance somewhere. If you've got a lot of stock to sell and you've not been able to sell it because of the pandemic, you know, maybe there's an opportunity somewhere with somebody to run a pop-up shop or, I don't know, a lot of times in this world it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I feel like the more people know that you need some help getting your business moving again. You know, I mean, like I said at the beginning of this, you're not on your own. Lots of people are struggling because of the pandemic. I was listening to something this morning. You know, there's a lovely lady who specialises in marketing specialist and artisanal food companies. You know, farmers market type people. And the farmers markets have all been shut and their little artisanal stores have all been shut and they've not known what to do with themselves and she's been out of work for a while caring for a terminally ill parent and she's come back into the marketplace and everything's changed the landscape has changed but actually although she felt like she didn't know what her opportunities were anymore she very quickly realized that the pandemic hadn't changed anything that actually a lot of these artisanal companies needed her help to market their businesses online they were so used to popping up at the farmers market and just getting their their money there that now they've got to do proper e-commerce online and post things out and she's the exact right person to help them so it actually turned out all right in the end there's a transformation that is needed here there's a change in thinking that is needed I did do a shuffle to try and get some energy for the the three of shells there and I've got the sun, vitality and joy, achievement, enthusiasm, freedom, success. This, this is actually a very positive reading and I want to send you a massive hug Libra but because I know what it's like if this reading is resonating with you and I actually hope it doesn't resonate for you because you know, maybe you're having a great time and you, you quids in and everything's marvellous. But if this is resonating with you, I understand completely what it feels like. It's awful. It is awful. But I need you to know that positive stuff can come out of this. 
I need you to know that. It's vitally important for you to know that. Spirit wants you to know that. That's why the sun card is there. That whatever happens, whatever is happening now, it's the dark before the dawn. The abundance is there for you. You just might have to change the way that you go out and get it. Your business model might have to change. Your attitude might have to change. Your friendship circle might have to change. You might have to invite a few more people in to help. But you've got this, Libra. The outcome... You know, I started this reading feeling really heavy. Really sort of, oh my God, there's so much anxiety and worry here. And I've ended it thinking, well, this is great because it gets better as it goes along. It just requires some stamina, some determination from you, some commitment to do what needs to be done for a little bit and that's not working 18 hour days but just making the small changes or the tweaks that you need to move this forward I'm going to leave that there Libra if you like this video please do like, share and subscribe it's totally free for you but it really helps me grow and get my messages out if you need any support, please do let me know in the comments. I'll put a link for the Firefly Circle underneath where you can come talk to me. And I'll leave a link to the Havening video as well. Because honestly, if you need to get rid of the sick feelings, if you need to get rid of that horrible feeling like you've got rocks in your belly as you go to bed at night, you know, it's probably stopping you sleeping it's probably stopping you taking any sort of care of yourself go and try it and then let me know how you went on because I'll be fascinated to know it works like a treat for me it really does I love it I absolutely love it it's helped me deal with all sorts of things from oh I had extreme grief over the death of a pet and I couldn't function for a couple of days and then I tried the havening and it helped me to to function again it didn't stop me grieving my pet but it did stop me being a, a hollering mess on the floor all day long and unable to get on with life. You know, I was devastated. <laughs> oh, I won't lie. Um, but it did help me to function, you know, and I, I, when I felt like I couldn't. It's helped me get through a lot of things. And it, it will help you, I promise. It's revolutionary. It's fabulous. Everybody should know about it. Not enough people know about Haveny. And I'm going to go now. Because my voice is going a little bit as well. I've only done two readings today. My voice is going. It's crazy. It's because I'm so out of practice. I've really, really, really enjoyed doing this for you. And I'm sending you massive, massive hugs, my friend. And I will see you again in December. When we'll be getting a little bit Christmassy around here. And maybe thinking about the next 12 months after that. So, I'll see you again soon. Libra with love and magic always. This is Maria Guyon signing out. Have a great November or what's left of it. Music